Welcome everybody. Um, Prime Minister, Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Minister Brownlee, um, and other guests, welcome to uh, Restart this afternoon. We've come a long way since you, Prime Minister, opened this bold initiative in October 29, 2011. Since then, this wonderful container mall has continued to evolve, as all good retail should, and has become well and truly established in the new Christchurch CBD map. We're delighted that you've joined us again today to shortly announce another exciting step along the restart journey. To briefly recap, while Restart amazingly took only 60 days to actually configure and build, its planning started just one week after February 22, 2011. This is when a group of central city property and business owners met to thrash out how to rekindle the CBD retail as quickly as possible. As you can imagine, it seemed a monumental task amid the chaos, but we knew that early action was utterly crucial. We took the idea of a temporary retail precinct to you, Minister Brownlee, and we're encouraged to continue by your enthusiasm for the project. <clears throat> and while containers for all sorts of purposes are commonplace now in Christchurch, the idea was a bit of a wild card three years ago. I'll always remember the feeling when I was out in Littleton Harbour and watched the precious cargo of 61 containers arriving on the deck of a container ship at the end of August 2011. And just 60 days later, Restart opened, which was extraordinary. So much has been extraordinary along the way. From the beginning, the huge effort from Sarah to facilitate construction of Restart inside the Red Zone, the provision of finance from the Christchurch Earthquake Appeal Trust to make Restart possible in a grant from ASB, the talented consultants who designed, engineered and built them all, the city property owners who made the land available and the companies who signed up the retailers, the people of Christchurch and tourists who supported the businesses in Restart, and currently the work of Christchurch Central Development U Unit, CCDU, enabling us to continue trading. Also, my fellow trustees who govern the Restart the Heart Trust are always available to lend their expertise and the tireless work of our original manager, Paul Lonsdale. But especially, I want to thank our retailers. It hasn't always been easy, but they understood and embraced the vision. Like us, they wanted to continue to put, stamp their mark on the inner city. Their courage and vision is synonymous with Christchurch's inner city rebuild, and the Restart the Heart Trust thanks them for their patience and commitment. Restart has always been about collaboration and cooperation to produce a viable, temporary inner city retail as a transition until a permanent premises are built. The objective remains today. We're immensely grateful for the government's interest and financial assistance to restart as the CBD enters the rebuild stage. So now I'd like to hand over to the Prime Minister to share with you the next chapter of restart. Uh, John, thanks very much. Can I just acknowledge uh, you, uh, Jerry Brownley, for the great work that he's doing here in Christchurch. Uh, Paul Lonsdale Warwick, just acknowledge you and Sarah uh, and the tremendous things that are taking place. So uh, I remember actually a while ago, uh, some years ago now, when Jerry first came and said to me, I, I want to back this project called uh, uh, the Restart Mall. And I said, tell me what that's all about. And he said, oh, it'll be a bunch of containers opposite uh, Ballantines and uh, people will go shopping there. Uh, at that point, I thought Jerry had gone mad and uh, said, really, you want millions of dollars for this? He goes, well, it's a loan. So, OK. But anyway, um, it turned out to be not only right, um, uh, incredibly right, as was uh, John Suckling and the group that was behind it all. And I remember coming down here on an absolutely gorgeous afternoon uh, on a Saturday and doing the announcement that was opening, and there were just hundreds, I think thousands of people waiting to, to come streaming along and to go in and have the opportunity. And to give you an idea of how great living success is, I was just walking along on the road and there were three or four um, youngsters there and I said to them, what are you doing? They said, oh, we're students. 
And they said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm just coming along to announce that we're moving all of the containers down the road. And they said, you're not taking our mall away from us, are you? I went, well, we're just moving it down the road. And they said, well, we don't want it to move. And I said, well, just be down the road. You'll be fine. We're going to build some new shops here. And they went, oh, OK, that'll do. So great example of the fact that it's, it's, it's worked incredibly well. And I think for contemporaries, you know, having the sense of being able to come back to the city to feel connected to the CBD again has been a really important part of the process of uh, progress and moving forward. So that was uh, really the history of it. And um, we're now into the next chapter, which is really an opportunity for us to confirm um, that thanks to the partnership between the Crown and the private sector, the Restart Mall will continue to be partially relocating to a new site. So when uh, the retailers on the northern side of the mall leave in late April to make way for a permanent development, they'll be able to relocate to a combination of Crown and privately owned land in the southwest end of the retail precinct bounded by Cashel Street, Oxford Terrace, Litchfield Street and Plymouth Lane. As well as providing land for lease for one year and potentially a second year, uh, the Crown uh, will be providing funding of about £1.27 million uh, to enable the relocation to occur. We see that as an important part of the recovery and maintaining a very popular attraction while the transition to permanent development continues in what will be a vibrant new retail precinct. While there may be a period of transition to the new site, we expect to see uh, the retailers operating from the new site in the weeks following the end of trading on the northern side of the mall. I want to thank those retailers for showing patience and continued commitment to the restart while this arrangement was being worked through by the Crown, uh, the Restart, the Heart Trust and the private landowners. And I look forward to seeing the exciting uh, new shopping area. While I'm here, can I just make a, a few other um, comments on the wider issues of Christchurch? Firstly, uh, obviously, Cantabrians uh, have had to suffer in the last sort of 48 hours with um, yet another um, challenge for their city in terms of the flooding that took place. And I think for a lot of um, families and businesses, uh, it is a, a sense of immense frustration that uh, the city they love, live in and work in that suffered so badly through the earthquakes is now having to defend itself against uh, Mother Nature once more in terms of these floods. But uh, you know, for all of those challenges and frustrations, my sense of Christchurch is that there's a lot more optimism in the air now. People can see progress. You've got projects like the Avon River Precinct that's uh, starting to, to uh, move along and, uh, and doing well. Uh, the government's been down here on a series of very important announcements from the Justice Precinct right through uh, to the uh, hospital that's being built. Uh, this is going to be a magnificent place both to work, uh, to live and play in terms of the CBD and all of the international evidence shows that people do want to be in a, a central location in terms of living, um, having their employment and uh, ensuring that they can have recreational and retail activities. What's also happening in Christchurch is a very strong economy. So you've got um, growth at 6.2% in Christchurch. It's the fastest growing region in the country. It is one of the lowest levels of unemployment in the country. In fact, uh, male unemployment is probably running at under 2.5% here in Christchurch. So it's very, very strong. Uh, and there's, uh, I think, a real sense that people can see that we're turning the corner. So. Yes, there are plenty of challenges and individual frustrations. It's a very complex issue. It's a $40 billion plus rebuild. And uh, at a very micro level, uh, they are frustrations that, that everyday people have to live with. And we need to try and give them as much assistance as we can to help them through that process. But the overall message for Christchurch is that um, real progress is being made. And in fact, the reason that the restart mall is having to move earlier than was anticipated in recent years is a sign of the real progress that, in fact, retailers want to come back into permanent buildings, permanent facilities, and support the sea. CBD rebuild. So it's a day of, um, I think, um, justification for the project and celebration that the city's doing well. And uh, we just have to continue as a government to work alongside the council uh, to deliver the results that Cantabrians need and deserve. Uh, but there's a lot happening here. We'll be spending a um, billion dollars on, on new schooling in the city. Uh, you'll have, uh, to match what is arguably the, the best airport in the country, uh, the newest, flashiest and arguably best um, hospital in the country. Uh, you'll have amazing infrastructure and uh, it'll be a great place to, to continue to live. So 
you know, I think there's uh, some great things going on in Christchurch, and we just need to keep working to that long-term aim of making this the best uh, city in New Zealand to live in. So thanks very much. Thank you for those uh, comments, Prime Minister. Uh, can I also acknowledge uh, Councillor Ali, Ali Jones, who's here with, along with Paul Longstall. I'm not sure if any other councillors are here. Uh, the, uh, the Restart Trust trustees, uh, and of course our Sarah people who are here as well, as well as the many of you who I'm sure are retailers and others who are interested in the success here. Uh, the Prime Minister, you probably underplay the uh, uh, role that you have yourself played in making uh, support available for something like this. Uh, while you did uh, question uh, how a, re uh, a container mall might, uh, might work, um, I was pleased that when you did come here, you, your immediate comments were, oh hell, I didn't think it'd be like this. So um, <laughs> I'd give you all a few statistics now about how successful it has been, but I've learnt in recent days that perhaps I'm not the best person to <laughs> give out statistics. What I do want to say is that we are looking forward to, um, well not ones that other people have given me anyway, so... Uh, <laughs> The, uh, we are looking forward to um, the, what this really means. As the Prime Minister has just said, it is a, it is a moving on. Uh, these people will, uh, who are working over here now uh, will have that opportunity to stay in the precinct. That's important. But you can see Anthony Goff's uh, big development over there making good progress. And uh, once uh, uh, these uh, containers do move, then uh, Nick Hunt's work over there will become very visible as well. And it's a big commitment that these guys, local investors, are making uh, to the CBD. Uh, I want to acknowledge others who are in the room. I see Tim Glasson here, uh, who I know has other plans for parts of the retail sector as well. And all of that really is adding to the confidence that everyone has about living in Christchurch and enjoying the good aspects of it. One thing the Restart Trust has done for us, I think, is demonstrate that the concept of uh, discrete shops with laneways and open spaces is very much a winner with the uh, Canterbury public. Look, I also would like today just to uh, release the preliminary designs for the new central city uh, bus interchange. Tra public transport is very, very important. Uh, people will know that in the CBD we're looking at uh, some slower uh, speed restrictions, uh, but part of that is to encourage public transport as much as possible. And so uh, from today those preliminary designs will be uh, available for people to look at. You can see on the panels uh, to the sides of the room uh, the sort of concept that's being looked at uh, and that we work through uh, in the months ahead. We do want to have that very efficient public transport network and these uh, initial designs uh, have been completed based on a number of other successful interchanges uh, internationally. So it will feature some retail that will uh, face on to uh, Colombo Street and Manchester Street at the two ends. It will also be built in a way that would allow further development above it uh, in the years ahead as, as people become more confident about their uh, you know, three, four, five storey type of buildings here. Um, the uh, total cost of that is expected to be somewhere in the vicinity of $53 million, uh, and we would hope to have that up and running as quickly as possible. It has to be operational before the last stage of the Justice Precinct can uh, proceed, uh, so there is some urgency with getting on with that particular project. It will make a difference to uh, access in here. Um, I just want to indicate too that this uh, project is an important part of the Accessible Cities chapter inside the city's overall recovery plan uh, and it is one that the public will have an opportunity to make some comment on. Um, I think that's enough to say about that. All I want to say is that uh, with regards to the events of the last 48 hours we have reactivated the uh, emergency repairs program uh, that does mean that if people ring 0800 777 846, then someone can get to them. I want to uh, thank the Canterbury Community Trust for making $20,000 available immediately to assist people uh, in their clean-up. Uh, BNZ have matched that with uh, a further donation, so there's a growing pool of money from our community will be available to help people uh, with the clean-ups that they have to do. They're not easy, and what I also wanted to report is that the City Council have uh, for some months been engaged with uh, both Sarah and EQC engineers looking at what might be a, a, a solid remediation project uh, program uh, to effectively mitigate the risk of further flooding in, in those areas that were worst affected. And we'll work very constructively. I think it's 
uh, the, it's quite impressive what the council have planned, and I know that they are trying to move as quickly as they possibly can. Uh, can I also say that the mayor would have liked to have been here today, but largely because of the commitments that have arisen out of the events the last couple of days, I assume she's held up and not able to be here. Uh, but uh, I know that her best wishes are with you all, uh, and that uh, uh, that she would wish everybody who's part of this project this transition every success for the months ahead. Thanks very much.